Now, Hamas, meanwhile, has told people living in northern Gaza to stay in their homes. That's despite the warning from Israel's military for them to evacuate. Israel has told 1.1 million people to leave. That's about half of the population of the entire Gaza Strip. Now, a team from German public television sent this report from inside Gaza. This Gaza hotel has become a refuge for civilians, diplomats and journalists. A place of relative safety, set back from the surrounding residential blocks in this densely populated area. The air billowing with smoke and dust from Israeli missile strikes. Israeli media say 3,600 targets in Gaza have so far been hit. Pfizer is a trained pharmacist. She does what she can to treat the injured. Administering first aid in the hope that an ambulance will come to take the casualties to hospital. At the moment, we have four wounded people here. We've tried our best to stabilize them, but we need an ambulance as quickly as possible. There just aren't any. We've been waiting for five hours already. Hardly anyone dares venture onto the street. One cameraman gets as far as the hotel entrance. Nearby housing takes a direct hit. Moments later, another strike. This time, the shockwave reaches the hotel lobby. Hamas fighters can retreat to an extensive network of tunnels, but there's nowhere for the civil population to go. Palestinian officials say more than 1,500 people have been killed, including nearly 500 children. The humanitarian situation is getting more desperate as Israel blocks power and water supplies. Fuel for generators is running low. In the darkness, repeated missile strikes. The whole situation out there is inhuman. We urgently need humanitarian intervention. Foreigners may be stuck here, but we also need a way out. These are civilians here, mothers and children. But even with a safe way out, we wouldn't know where to go. Pfizer and many others remain at the hotel. No one knows how long they will be there. And we're going to cross over to Gaza now to speak to Hashem Balusha. He's a journalist based there, and he joins me via telephone. Uh, good to have you on the program, uh, Hashem. So uh, just as we've been discussing with my colleague, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces has given people 24 hours to leave northern Gaza. What is happening where you are? It's fully chaotic here. The chaos, people are lost. Um, I mean... They lost their minds. They are like they are thinking, calling everybody, trying to communicate and to understand what's happening. This is the new thing that happened in Gaza, never been before. Uh, people don't know what to do, where to go. Um, uh, despite the local uh, uh, authority here saying like this is this is um, um, uh, this is not true, and people shouldn't leave, and they have to stay in their places, but without giving them any instruction what to do. Um, you know, even if the people decided to leave, I mean, it's it's impossible. The, the capacity and, and the capabilities of the other part of Gaza Strip wouldn't be able to contain the one million or over one million move from north and Gaza City to the south. Um, uh, the infrastructure there is limited, as well as, like, even there is no enough schools for, for, for those people to move. And in the same time, that, that part in, 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 of the Gaza Strip is not totally safe. I mean, there was um, an, now an airstrike over there. I can hear it and see the smoke. Um, and, and, you know, there was an, an um, airstrike here today in, in Deir el which is, right. which is in, inclu included in the area that 
uh, in Israel instructed people to go, and there was like um, uh, about 20, 22 people were killed there, according to the local mm. reports, and Rafa as well. So people don't know. I mean, it's not safe there, and they always raise the question and wonder where to go, how to go, and 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 what to do, and you know, is it safe? Understood. It's not. Hashem. So, I, I just want to come in on that point there um, because you seem to be um, alluding to the fact that there's been mixed messaging, people not knowing if it is true indeed that they have to evacuate. Um, I'm interested to know if, if you're going to be evacuating, have you made plans to do that and what does this entail from a logistical perspective? Is there the infrastructure to move people at that scale? Uh, if I, uh, I mean, the, the, the sound was, wasn't clear enough, but if I hear it, like you're asking about myself, yes, I'm... I'm thinking of it since the early morning. I received a recorded message from IDF saying that for the North General One, and, and you have to evacuate for, and without saying even like how long or you know which period or rules, they didn't give instruction to anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping this as, as an option, and I'm looking for a place to go because honestly, I don't know where to go. You know, like even I have my car and. And it's like limited amount of fuel in there, and barely able to 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 go there with with the fuel remaining in the tank in, in my car, and um, and there is no um, um, uh, there is no no fuel. I can uh, refill it from the stations in Gaza because all all the fuel is run out or stored in in some places. So, um, to be honest, and my wife, my kids, and neighbors, I'm I'm staying at. at like currently, I moved out of my my house like a few days ago, and I'm in a, in a relative's house. So, and I'm thinking now to go somewhere, but I mean I don't know where. I'm still yeah. figuring out where, where, and and and, and how it's gonna ha make it happen. You know, Hashem, um, you, you were talking about the situation in the south, and and you were you were you were saying that it's just not possible for the south to be able to to host that many people um, at, at a single point in time. We also know that the only exit in the south would be through Egypt, but that border is closed. All right, I, I, it might be that we've lost that connection to Hashem. I'm just trying to establish if that indeed is the case. Um, he had alluded to the fact that he was having difficulty hearing me, so understandably we have now lost uh, that question to Hashem. But we heard him telling us there how difficult the situation is. People have received messages uh, to leave, but of course that is a difficult thing for people. Infrastructure, he talked about having a car, but it doesn't have fuel. Uh, so that is the situation as we're hearing it from Gaja. We'll see if we can maybe get him back onto the program later to finish that conversation. But for now, that was the journalist um, Hashem Balusha in Gaza talking to us there. I'm now joined by Ahmed Bayram. Uh, he is the Middle East Regional Media and Communications Advisor at the Norwegian Refugee Council. He joins us from Amman. Welcome to DW. What are you hearing from your staff on the ground in Gaza? Morning. Uh, our staff are perplexed, really, by last night's announcement. We have moved from worry to uh, panic to fear and now perplexity. There's, there is, um, this announcement is going to threaten and not just our staff, not just um, an entire or half of, of the population in Gaza, but also the future of this, um, you know, uh, conflict. Uh, our staff, um, 50 of them, Palestinians, over 50 of them, uh, have to leave home. They are fearing for their lives. Their children don't know what is happening. And they think that what is happening is punishment um, for um, an entire population. Uh, this is, honestly, I'm speaking to you and I'm thinking of my colleagues. Some of them have been disconnected from the world who don't know where to go this morning. This is the, this is the phrase that everyone is repeating. We don't know where to go. Mm. And our colleagues um, are not even able um, to um, help in these circumstances. Mm. Ahmed, the order is uh, from the IDF that people in northern Gaza must all head south um, and they've been given 24 hours. Is that realistic? It's not just unrealistic. It's really, um, I think, a reckless attempt to uh, panic people. Um, there is no... There is no 
honestly, there's no genuine way you can achieve that. Hospitals in North uh, Gaza have been uh, have been targeted. They are um, over flooded with patients. Some of them in life threatening situations, and also that kind of order gives the impression that um, southern Gaza is safe and that is simply not true. A lot of areas and Yunus, even the Rafah crossing has been has been uh, targeted. Um, so there are there are no shelters to take people in. Mm. Uh, there is no aid for people. There is no place for people to stay in. And this is not just unrealistic, but it is all, mm. it's also a flagrant breach of international law. Ahmed, I want to pick up on the point you're making about aid. We know that there is a desperate need for aid to get into Gaza right now. Has there been any breakthrough on that front? The, there hasn't. Um, there hasn't. Israel threatens to uh, bomb the Rafah crossing if Egypt tries to uh, let, let aid in. Uh, the humanitarian, humanitarian corridors and humanitarian pause that we have been asking for is not just unachievable as of now because of Israel's actions. We're actually heading in the opposite direction, the direction of escalation against the civilian population of two million people um, under the pretext of, of, of a response to a group of, of, uh, of armed groups. This is not how, um, how you deal with a situation where you are obviously laying a siege um, over two million people the entire Gaza Strip is less than 400 kilometers, square kilometers. Mm. Um, two million people are crammed into this into this strip. They are being being bombarded from every side. And, you know, latest you hear is you're telling them to go from one unsafe and dangerous area to another. All right, we'll leave it there. Ahmed Bayram from the Norwegian Refugee Council. Thank you for for that.